going on? So uh, today's video, we're going to talk about check engine lights, uh, especially motorcycle check engine lights or Kawasaki Z900 check engine light. So if your check engine light's coming on for some particular reason, I'm going to show you how to read that. All you need is this bad boy right here. So this is a cheap Wi-Fi or Bluetooth car reader. OBD2 is what they're called. And you can get them on eBay, Amazon, parts store. You can even go borrow one from AutoZone if you wanted. So I'm going to show you how to, you can make your own little connector to connect to your bike. Um, now there are a couple things you got to be careful of. You plug the wrong thing in and you ground something out, it could cause some problems. But I'll show you what I did. Because uh, uh, when I hooked up my AutoTune, I had the check engine light from the O2 sensor. So I had to do the O2 bypass. And once I did that, I had to clear my check engine light. And uh, this is how I did it. So I'll take you through the steps on how I did it. So what you're going to need is like a, it's a cheap little Harbor Freight kit. You guys might even have some around the house. Uh, we're going to need... It's basically four connections. We're going to do it with three wires. And it's two grounds, a power, and the signal wire. So here's a little cheap cheap wire. I put a regular, I don't even know what these things are called, whatever these things are. I'm sure you guys seen them before. Uh, so this is, we're going to use this one as our ground wire. Uh, on the OBD2 reader, you'll see inside, you'll see inside these two pins that stick up. You see those two tall pins? You won't have those in the front. Let's call this the back, I guess. Uh, those two pins that stick up, those are your ground pins, okay? Now, conveniently, this little thing, speaker wire, I think that's what these are. These go on speakers. That fits perfectly on both those ground wires, just like that. Bam! Look at that. Great, right? So now, what we need to do is be able to connect it to the bike. And the bike end is going to be a female end. So we need something that's pointy. And that's not going to come loose fairly easy or pop out. So what I like to use is one of these. Uh, it's kind of like a, a terminal to go under a battery or under a bolt or a power. So I like to use one of those. So what we can do is we'll skin this wire. Okay, do a little twist. Put that in there like so. Crimp it. Okay. So now the trick is, is we need to cut one of these tangs off. So just use your cutters. And we're gonna cut one off. So that leaves us with just one. See that? So. That way we can stick that right in the female end. So now we have our cable. So again, we look for the long ones on the back. Now yours might be different, I'm not sure. Plug that in, now we have our ground. That's gonna plug into the harness, okay? And so, I've made a couple other ones. So you're gonna cut half of it off. So split it right down the middle. And so you, there you go, so you got half. And you might might need to squeeze it a little bit, and so that way when you connect it, when you connect this, it slides right on. And just make sure you're not touching the other prong next to it. So I like to turn it away from. You see how? So it's not touching, and it's good connection. And then on the other end, I have. The one for my mail. So, on this OBD2 reader, I got the back side with the ground facing down. This corner top right pin right here is your power. Okay? So, what we want to do is take that end, connect it, push it on. So, just like so. So, that's our power, right? So, that would power the OBD2. These would be grounding it. 
So now we need the signal wire, okay? The signal or the CAN bus. So that's, let me pull this ground off real quick. So on the Kawasaki, so this is what changes between bikes. Um, different bikes are different di with different ones, okay? So with the Kawasaki, it's the seventh one from this left side, okay? So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's this one right here, right below the power and over one. Or it's the second one from the right. Uh, so now keep in mind the way this is shaped. This is the top that I have with the has the connector on the top, the clip. It's shorter up at the top and is longer across the bottom. So if you if you're holding it this way and you're looking at it, it's gonna be the seventh one, the seventh one from the left, or the second one from the right is gonna be your signal. So we're gonna take our little connector, put it on. Take the rear cowling off, or your rear seat, pull the main seat off, that's our service port. Okay, This is what the dealer uses when they need to connect, they want to do repairs to the bike or they want to read what you're doing, this is it here. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but alright, so you pull the cover off, don't lose that, you put that back on. All right. So here's your connector, right? So you might be saying, hey Kelly, which which uh, which pins do I plug into? This is the notch. This is what it clips in the cover. Power and ground are on this left side. Let's get rid of our voltmeter. What we're wanting to do, we're wanting to read the check engine light, right? We want to see all the information. So that's going to be this top middle one. Okay, that's the the CAN bus we want to connect to. The other ones we don't want to mess with. So we need to power the top left, ground is bottom left, our signal is the top middle. Please make sure they are not touching other little connectors. Okay? So go ahead and turn, make sure the bike is off. The ground is going to go to bottom left. It's going to slide it right in that little, should slide right in. I would suggest if you want to get a live feed, and pay attention to what's going on with your bike while you're riding by the adapter. The adapter I believe is only like 40 bucks so this is because I'm cheap and I don't really want to do all that. Alright so I have them all plugged in. I feel very confident that they're not touching anything I don't want them to touch. Alright. So the red one's my power. This top left. There's my little nub on top. Top left. Ground my ground. Okay, my signal wire is number seven or two from the right. It goes right in the middle. Alright, so now when I power the bike on, it should power up. And there we go. Got little blinky lights. Yay. So just to give you guys a heads up, I know I'm not sure on iPhones but on Android, if you're trying to connect to your Wi-Fi uh, OBD2, OBD2 uh, you need to go to advanced and disable the, the switch to mobile data so it'll see there's no internet connection so it'll switch to my data so it won't stay connected so. all right to get it connected to your phone is kind of finicky at least with my obd2 reader here so you turn the bike on look for the wi-fi spot there it is connect uh, I, I turn off my location services. Sometimes that seems like it might make not help. Uh, and then go to torque light. And then, so you're in torque light, and it'll say connecting to OBD2 via Wi-Fi 1. And then it, it, it's like it's it's got to look for the protocol, because I guess different vehicles have different types of communication. So Kawasaki has their own type, and Acura has their own type, Honda has their own type. So it's different types of language. So it's got a default, it's got a change. So it's got to sit here and it's trying Wi-Fi 1 and it's trying to communicate. And so what it's going to do, it's going to fail and then switch to the next protocol. So you have to just kind of wait. Now if you have one where you can set the protocol and pick Kawasaki and, and, get, and automatically switch the protocol, then, then that's great. Um, mine, not so, yeah, no.
There we go, finally. So it, it is like the fifth one. So see how the lights are blinking now on the OBD2 reader? So now I can actually go in, go to my fault codes and say show log files. And it's reading, requesting fault codes. And it says there is no fault codes because I've already cleared them. Um, so you can start the bike up and look at your throttle, your vacuum, your speed, all that. It's pulling all that information. So this is how to... Let's uh, crank it up. That's how you do it. So if you had a code, you go to fault code, show log faults, and it'll basically say code's been found, and it'll tell you what the code is. If the code is an O2 sensor, it'll say, you know, search the web for it. Um, then if you want to clear them, you just say clear log faults, and then you clear them out. So you just hit that and say okay. I don't have any code, so it ain't, it ain't really going to do anything, but and that's it. So now when you're done, go ahead and just close your app. I like to disconnect my Wi-Fi. Make sure I'm disconnected. Go ahead and shut the bike off. And then go ahead and pull out your connectors. You going to put your little cap back on. And stick it right back in its little holder. And you got these for next time. If so there you go. So that's how you can read your ECU with a car OBD2 and your cell phone. Um, like I said, you got to be patient, hook it up, just wait. It's got to get like to the fifth one of the protocol and then it just connects. And then there you go. You, again, please like, subscribe. If you like my content, please. Like and subscribe. I'll just keep making it. All right. Peace out, YouTube.